Welcome back, Helldivers. Today, I want to talk about a new weapon, the R36 Eruptor that comes with the new Battle Pass, Democratic Detonation. I've been hearing a lot of good things about this weapon. In fact, I've been seeing YouTube thumbnails saying, this is insane, cracked, it breaks the game. Uh, and then to my surprise, when I used it myself, I found it incredibly, let's say, balanced. Uh, I'm not here to yuck anyone's yum. If you find it fun and you're having fun using it, go for it. People seem to get really offended when I make these videos, like their whole identity is centered on a certain weapon and I shouldn't be comparing weapons. But I'll tell you why it's important to compare what's out there and what's in the sandbox and the landscape and the environment of Helldivers. And that's because this is part of a paid battle pass. And right now, if you are new to Helldivers, and you're thinking about getting this battle pass, you don't have any of the previous ones, I probably have some recommendations for you of what you should prioritize over getting the Eruptor. So I do want to balance out some of those YouTube videos I've already seen that are like, this is the best gun ever, you should prioritize getting this gun because I think right now there actually are better, better loadouts and better options that you can be running. That being said, this gun is fun and it does do a lot of things, but it also has a lot of disadvantages. Let's get into it. Right, there's no background sound effects because I recorded this all over on stream. I played with this weapon for about six and a half hours today, and this is what I have found. The way to think about this weapon, the Eruptor, is it is essentially a AMR, the anti-material rifle. So it's a bit like a sniper rifle, and it even has sniper rifle scopes on it, uh, but it has explosive rounds. And it is like having a support weapon as your primary, which this is where you get the thumbnails right it's insane crazy like because it, it quite literally switched switches the roles of a support weapon being in your primary weapon slot it has five rounds in the magazine with 12 mags total it has a huge blast radius it has like a six meter blast radius fun fact if you've ever done range testing before the ranges change depending if you're in third person or first person so i always range test in first person uh because i think it actually does your range depending on where the camera is anyway the blast radius is massive it's like six meters so not good if things are close to you really good for clearing out uh well actually there's lots of things it does well with the blast radius we'll get to that in a sec and it has a limited range of about 125 meters there was some funky hell diver stuff happening here but in general, I found about 125 meters you can shoot this weapon at. Anything beyond that, it just like does an air burst and will blow up in the air. Um, so you can't just cross map everything, which you'll find out is important for this gun in a moment. The rounds will ricochet off medium and heavy armor. However, this is where it comes into its own thing. The explosive damage does penetrate and does some really interesting things so for example you can one shot striders you will see that the bullet ricochets off their body but the driver of the strider dies the scout strider and you can one shot them very very handy for automatons you can also shoot cannon turrets from the front which is huge because i don't i don't think anything else does that unless it is an uh an eat or a quasar so you can actually destroy cannon turrets from the front does take a lot of bullets it took me like eight shots in my case and some of those shots were actually on the grill itself uh but yeah you could just shoot it at the front it takes eight shots and blow up similarly you can also kill a tank without having to go behind it very similar to how you would use an eat or a quasar you just shoot the turret with it and you can blow it up i think it's much better for shooting a weakened tank like someone's already shot it with a rocket and it's on fire and then you finish it off by shooting the turret it can do pretty well the explosive damage that you see well actually i don't even know if it's just like this six meter radius explosive damage that's actually doing that or that's just like a thing that those enemies have that like explosive damage just damages the turret of cannons and tanks but it doesn't work on hulk so you can't just shoot a hulk in the face plate and that explosive damage will, will eventually tick away at it. It just doesn't work. You have to get behind the Hulk like you would with other weapons and shoot it in the grill. The explosive damage does do work though on, you can destroy factories, you can destroy bug holes and you can blow up the front door of the, those containers that are buried. 
and of course it will completely and utterly destroy small to medium enemies. Like I said, you one-shot the Scout Striders, you one to two-shot Devastators depending on their variant, you one-shot most of the bugs, some of them take two shots, but you, you absolutely, you know, you're shooting an explosive <laughs> snipe around. It'll destroy all that stuff. Right, so this all sounds pretty goddamn good, so why don't I recommend it? Well, the first thing to talk about is the reload. You can go make a cup of coffee and come back before you've loaded another round. And actually, not, not just the, the reloading of a magazine, but the, the bolt action of putting in another round takes a long time. And this is kind of how they balance out the weapon. Otherwise, it would be really, really strong. So, so for example, shooting at the cannon turret or a tank is huge that you can actually shoot them from the front like that's a big advantage but it takes you a lot of bullets and in that time you probably could have shot off two EATs or you could have used your quasar that only has a 10 second cooldown so you're not sort of gaining an advantage above any other heavy stratagem or heavy support weapon and it's not really strong enough to effectively deal with heavies it can deal with heavies like I said you can take out hulks from behind you can take out tanks from the front you can take out charges. If you get behind them, you can shoot the squishy parts. You can get really lucky with like shrapnel and like ricochet and shoot them from the front and hit a joint and really take them out quickly, but it's definitely not consistent. Once again, it'd be more effective to use a quasar or EAT to the head and take them down in one shot. So whilst it can deal with the heavies, it's definitely not the most effective thing and it's not gonna replace you having to you know, need a heavy stratagem. It also can't deal with Bile Titans. I did get some hit markers on joints, but it just really wasn't effective. I couldn't just shoot a Bile Titan and take them out using this weapon. And so this is the main way this weapon is balanced. It's very slow in dealing with heavies in a very chaotic game. And to be effective against heavies, you need to have a heavy stratagem on. You need to either have an EAT, the Quasar, or another you know orbital stratagem to deal with them. And not only that is, you then actually need a stratagem to be your primary weapon. So so everything before that's sort of okay, like, yeah, fair, okay, I need a heavy stratagem. Like, it's it's a primary weapon. It's not going to take out all heavies. Fair enough. I need a heavy stratagem to deal with heavies. That's okay. But then you also need, like, a support stratagem to be your primary because you can't just use this as your primary. You're going to run out of ammo. And in my case, I use my secondary for everything else, and I also ran out of ammo. So then you kind of need to use a stratagem as your... Uh, you need a support stratagem as your primary, i.e. I paired it with the stalwart uh, machine gun, or maybe use a flamethrower, or maybe use something else. Maybe use the, the arc thrower, probably another good option too, because you won't run out of ammo. So you kind of need a support weapon then as your primary. So then you're locked in to that stratagem too. So you, when you use this weapon, I felt like I was locked into two stratagems off the bat. I needed a heavy stratagem, EAT, Quasar, Orbital Rail Cannon, and I needed to have a support stratagem, uh, a machine gun, flamethrower, arc thrower. And to be honest, that's kind of how this game should be balanced. I actually think this is completely fair that you have like this weapon that's technically a support weapon in your primary slot, but it just can't do everything. And you need to fill up some other stratagem slots to make up for its downfall. I actually think this is very fair, very balanced. It is not insane. It doesn't break the game. It has a lot of functionality, but it's within its role. Um, but the issue is, well, the issue that I have is people saying you should get this above everything else. And right now, you can achieve everything that this gun is doing with a different build, and that's primarily using the, the JAR-5 Dominator and like a Quasar and an EAT. The JAR-5, if you haven't seen, is part of the Steeled Veteran um, expan uh, not expansion, the, the Battle Pass, which is also a paid Battle Pass. If you're new to, new to Helldivers, I would highly recommend you actually go after that first. It's probably one of the best primaries in the game right now. It has huge stagger, it has huge damage, medium armor penetration uh, you can deal with light and mediums uh, with it incredibly easily on automatons and bugs and you pair it with a quasar or an eat and actually now you've with only one stratagem a quasar or an eat you can literally deal with a hundred percent of anything the game throws out against you and then you can have three stratagems just for fun right 
So I don't think the Eruptor is insane or incredibly overpowered or breaks the game. I actually think it's incredibly balanced. It's got lots of downfalls for all of its advantages. And I think uh, right now my recommendation is if you are new to Helldivers, I would pursue the Jar 5 Dominator instead in the Steel Veteran Battle Pass if you, you don't need to buy that or you only have limited funds with the Super Credits. And that's all I have for you. If you'd like to support this channel and cannot leave a comment, you can leave the word R36 Eruptor. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.